Hello everyone, welcome to What If Deku Was Quirkless and Got Spider-Man's Powers Part 1. Before we start please go support Immortal King 71 for writing that awesome fanfic. Now let's begin. Season 1 Episode 1. Izuku Midoriya Origins. Sorry kid it's not gonna happen. Izuku's face went as pale as a ghost from the shock of hearing that dropping his toy in the process. Inko. Oh dear is something wrong, then I mean everyone else his age has been able to use some kind of ability. Doctor. My records say you're a fourth generation quirk users what powers do you and the boys farther have? Inko. Nothing too special I can float small objects towards me and my husband breathes fire they're useful enough I suppose. She said bringing the toy into her hand. Doctor. The boy should have gotten his quirk a while ago, but viewing his x-rays I don't think that's gonna happen. You see when superpowers first began appearing there were many research studies conducted and doctors discovered a connection between the bones of a person's foot and the likelihood of them acquiring a quirk. People with powers have one joint in their pinky toe, their powers evolve to a more stream-like version of the human form, you can see here that your son has two joints in his pinky, like roughly 20% of the population these days, based on the research available, it's safe to say that your son isn't gonna develop a quirk, time skip, it was currently night time and raining, the video could be heard playing in the background Inko stood in front of the door, the room was dark, all that illuminated it was the laptop screen, the big chair in front of it hid little Isaac's body, as Inko stared at her son, Izuku, See that mom? There's always a smile on his face no matter how bad things get. Inko took a step forward hearing her son's voice. Izuku. No matter how bad things get he never gives up. Izuku's voice was broken all you could hear was despair and heartache in his voice and when he turned revealing his destroyed expression, Inko teared up and covered her mouth with tears welled up as she collapsed hugging Izuku, who carried a broken smile on his face as he pointed shakily to the screen. Izuku. Can I be a hero, too? He asked his dear mother she walked to him and collapsed hugging her baby. Inko. I am sorry, I'm sorry Izuku I wish things were different. Tears continued falling down his eyes. Mum that's not what I needed you to say. Couldn't you see my world was crumbling there was only one thing I wanted to hear. I'm skipped to Adlera Junior High. Teacher. So. As third year students it's time to start thinking seriously of what you want to do with your lives. Now I could pass out some career aptitude requests. But. Everyone began to activate their quirk. Teacher. Why bother I know you all want to enter the hero course, he said throwing the papers in the air as everyone cheered behind him. Akugo. Hey teach. Don't lump us in with this bunch of losers we're the real deal, but these losers would be lucky to end up as sidekicks for some busted up D-lister head. Everyone. You think you're better than you ask Katsuki. Akugo. Let's go I'll take you all on. He shouted with too much pride. Teacher. How you've got impressive test results maybe you will get into UA. He said reviewing Katsuki's results on a clipboard as the class murmured about UA and how difficult it is to get in. Katsuki. That's exactly why it's the best school for me I aced all the mock tests. I'm the only ones in this school able to get into UA and then I'll take down all might and be the richest hero of all time people all across the world will know who I am and it'll all start in UA high. Teacher. Oh yeah Midoriya don't you want to go to UA too? Itsuki froze and the class looked at Izuku all quiet as he hid his head in his arms. He wears glasses. Everyone. Ha 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 ha. Random. Midoriya yeah right. Random. You can't get into UA without a quirk. Izuku. Actually they changed that rule I could be the first one. He said trying to convince them. But suddenly his desk was exploded and he was sent into the wall behind him. Itsuki. Listen up Deku you're even worse than these bunch of rejects you quirkless wannabe you really think they'd have you when they could have us instead. Izuku. H huh no wait you got it all wrong really. Izuku backed up till he bumped into the wall behind him. I'm not trying to compete against you three. You gotta believe me he said and then looked down. It's just it's always been my dream to go into UA and be a hero. I may not have a quirk but I can still try can't I he asked when Katsuki got even angrier and smoke came out his hands. Katsuki. You'd never be able to stand with the best of the best, you'd die in the exams defenseless Izuku, the school's already crappy do you really want to embarrass it more by failing so hard? He said as the class appeared demonic in front of Izuku while the boy looked at the floor hurt. Time skip. Izuku could be seen packing his bag up after a long day he took a look at his phone seeing the news about Mount Lady. Izuku. He looks like I got some more notes to write. He said to himself holding up his notebook when it was snatched away looking up, he found Bakugo and his lackey smirking at him with way too much pride. Itsuki. I don't know what you think you're doing Deku, but we ain't done yet. He told him with a glare. Lackey 1, what you got there his diary. He then took a look at the book's title. Lackey 2. Huh don't tell me you're taking notes on how to become a hero. That's pathetic ha ha ha. He laughed at Izuku before Bakugo exploded the book in between his hands. Izuku. Ah. Bakugo then threw it out the window. Izuku. That's so mean. 
The Kugo then placed his hand on Isaac's shoulder, causing a burn and making smoke come out take some advice and don't even think about applying he pushed Izuku back, making him trip and fall to the ground. The Kugo, most first string heroes are seen when their young people just look at them and know they're destined for greatness, it's not ego talking, I just know I'm good. Lucky. Ego. He whispered. They began walking away mocking him on the way before Bakugo stopped at the door. Bakugo. You know Deku there might be a way for you to get a quirk. He looked back to Izuku who looked at him with a small glimmer of hope in his eyes. Bakugo. Take a swan dive off the roof and pray for a quirk in your next life. Izuku's eyes widened, but they quickly closed a small tear fell out his eyes. Time skip. Izuku walked to the back of the school finding his notebook in a pond with fish biting on his book. Izuku. Stupid jerk what if I'd really jump what would you do then my dreams have turned into fish food, that's enough give it back. He said snatching it out the water while gritting his teeth in anguish staring at his book stupid jerk. After that Izuku left to go home on his way there he reached a bridge and stopped for a moment trying to lighten his mood. I made a vow that day no matter what anyone else thinks I have to believe in myself and I'll keep smiling just like him. Izuku walked under a bridge laughing like all might before hearing a strange noise behind him, he turned around seeing something building up behind him a large sludge like villain. Izuku a villain. He whimpered as it towered over him. You'll make a perfect skin suit for me to hide in. Kitazuku ran away as it jumped over enveloping him in its green body, shoving itself forcefully down his throat. Sludge. Don't worry I'm just taking over your body it'll be easier for both of us if you don't fight back you'll feel better soon. Izuku thoughts. I can tea breath. Sludge. Thanks for the help kid you're my hero kid I did know he was in the city I gotta get out of here fast before he tracks me down. Izuku thoughts, my body's getting weak I think I'm gonna die, somebody anybody help. The villain sent a attack at him, but duck dodging it and charging forward, reeling his fist back Texas smash. He roared sending a gust of wind blowing the villain away. Izuku looked in shock at the giant of a man before him, and then he fainted a All Might he whispered. Time skip. All Might was lightly slapping Izuku at high speed waking him up. All Might. Hey wake up Izuku slowly woke up thought I lost you there. Izuku's face morphed into one of shock before he scooted back screaming. Izuku. Hey ah. All might. Well looks like you're alright. Sorry about that back there you got caught up in you justicing. And although I have no idea what happened to the villain I usually do keep civilians safe. But it turns out the city sewer system is pretty hard to navigate. Ha dot h a dot h a dot h a dot h a. Anyway, you were a big help I've captured the evil dar. He said showing Izuku two soda bottles with a villain in them. Izuku thoughts. The most amazing hero in the entire world, all might in front of me in the flesh he looks so much cooler in person holy crap I need to get his autograph where's my notebook. Izuku found his notebook and was about to ask the man to sign it, when he found he already did causing him to scream in shock and begin bowing at high speeds, grateful thank you very much this will be a family heirloom for generations to come, all might gave a thumbs up. All might. Now if you'll excuse me I must give the villain to the police to deal with him see you around, he said crouching about to jump away. Izuku. Hey wait you're leaving already. All might. Pro heroes always have to be prepared for another villain to attack, I'm taking off thanks for your continued support. He shouted leaping through the air when he felt something on his foot and turned back to see Izuku flailing through the air. All might. Hey let go I love my fans, but this is too much. He shouted trying to push Izuku off of his leg. Izuku. No way we're flying if I let go now I'll die. All Might then realized it, oh I guess you're right, I just have so many things to ask you please All Might you're my favorite hero of all time, he shouted at All Might who took a moment before agreeing fine, just close your mouth and eyes, he told Izuku who did as told. All Might had a little blood escape his mouth shit he said to himself. Time skip. All Might landed on a random roof with Izuku who leaned on his knees for support nearly toppling over breathing heavily he managed to speak, I just saw my entire life flash before my eyes he said to himself. All might. All right I must leave, knock on the door they'll be sure to let you in. Izuku. Wait please. All might. No I don't have any time. Izuku. I have to know. Memories of his past flashed through his mind. Izuku thought, sometimes I do feel like a failure like there's no hope for me, but still I'm not gonna give up not ever. Izuku. Can someone without a quirk become a hero? He shouted at All Might who stopped. Izuku. I'm a normal kid without any powers could I ever hope to become someone like you. All Might turned slightly looking at Izuku who had his eyes closed and looking down. Meeting All Might that day was a dream come true a real miracle, I didn't realize it at that time, but that chance encounter would be something that would change the course of my future forever. Season 1 Episode 2. Realization. Flashback. All Might. Alright I must leave, knock on the door they'll be sure to let you in. Izuku. Wait please. All Might. No I don't have any time. Izuku. I have to know. Memories of his past flashed through his mind. Izuku thought, sometimes I do feel like a failure like there's no hope for me, but still I'm not gonna give up not ever. Izuku. Can someone without a quirk become a hero? He shouted at All Might who stopped. Izuku. I'm a normal kid without any powers could I ever hope to become someone like you. 
All Might turned slightly looking at Izuku who had his eyes closed and looking down. Meeting All Might that day was a dream come true real miracle. I didn't realize it at that time, but that chance encounter would be something that would change the course of my future forever. Present. All Might shook in pain hunching over he held his stomach, but our protagonist was too absorbed with his question to take notice of the man who had smoke coming out of him. Izuku. People think I'm some kind of weakling for not having a quirk and like to make fun of me, but you know what that makes me want to prove them wrong, ever since I was a kid, I thought that saving people was the coolest thing you can do I want people to see my fearless smile and be the kind of hero everyone in the world looks up to just like you. He said looking up with a smile at the now skin and bone version of All Might. Izuku shook with shock at the man in front of him standing in All Might's place. Izuku. Ooh ah ai ah. He screamed in terror. Izuku. All Might. He shouted in shock looking at the shriveled up man. Izuku. AI did you deflate what happened? How is this even possible? No you can't be him you're a fake and imposter. All Might. Young man I assure you I am all me pfft. He spit out blood. Izuku. Impossible. All Might. You know how guys at the pool are always sucking in and flexing trying to look buff I'm like that. He said while wiping his mouth. Izuku. This can't be real no, I'm dreaming All Might's a giant of a man who saves everyone he defeats all obstacles and saves the day with a fearless smile. All Might. Sigh there's plenty of fear behind that smile. He walked to the bars in front of him and sat down leaning on them. All Might. I accept you not to tell your friends about this or put on online. He raised his shirt revealing a scar making Izuku jump back. All Might. Pretty gross right. I got this in a fight few years back my respiratory system was destroyed, I lost my whole stomach all the surgeries pretty much worn me out, it can't be fixed right now I can only do hero work for hours a day rest of the time this is what I look like. Izuku gasped no way 5 years ago does that mean it was the fight with Toxic Chainsaw he questioned him wow, you really know your stuff, but no the punk may have landed some hits, but he couldn't bring me down most of the world has never heard of this fight, I did everything I could to keep it under wraps, he turned to look up at the sky. All might. I'm supposed to be the guy who can't be taken down right I'm the symbol of peace people everywhere have to think that I'm never afraid, but honestly I smile to hide the fear inside, it's just a brave face I put on when the pressure is high this job isn't easy. Izuku took a step back as All Might stared at him with powerful blue eyes, he could hear the words he was about to say the words he prayed to never hear. All Might. Pro heroes are always having to risk their lives, some villains just can't be beaten without a quirk, so can you be a hero not without a quirk. Izuku felt like he was shot by a shotgun through the heart he was utterly destroyed and looked down with pain in his eyes, I see he replied to the hero who stood up. All Might. If you want to help people there are plenty of ways to do it, you could be a police officer they get crap because the heroes capture most of the villains, but it's a fine profession. He walked over to the door on the roof and opened it stopping before he left, it's not bad to dream young man, just make sure those dreams are realistic, understand Izuku stood there with a broken smile, with all might, all might. Cough cough now let's get you to the. He grew shocked the bottle with the villain was gone, he looked around his body and still didn't find it before hearing an explosion and looking out the window beside him to where smoke was coming from not good, he said to himself. But Izuku. Izuku just stood there frozen before hearing the explosion he looked to the smoke and ran towards the door. Izuku. A villain I wonder which hero will show. Suddenly All Might's words replayed in his mind and he stopped his mood going down, and now he simply walked to the door. At the scene. At the sight the sludge villain caused destruction all over the police kept the people behind them, as the hero's death arms, Kamui Woods and Backdraft arrived. Death arms. How dare you prey on a child. He shouted at the sludge villain jumping into the air to punch it as it held a kid inside it. Sludge. Haha. Ha. F arm's fist sunk into it as he tried pushing out. What is this some type of goo? He shouted shocked by it before getting hit back into a metal wall. Extra hero 1. You okay death arms. Extra hero 2. Look out. The hero shouted as they dodged an incoming tendril to smash down on the shop behind them. Sludge. Ha stay back or I'll snap his neck. The boy revealed himself to be Bakugo who pushed with all his might to get out of the sludge. Bakugo, gry ah you picked the wrong guy to mess with I'm gonna blow you up and send you back to whatever hole you crawled out of. He shouted creating small explosions, let me go he shouted trying to get out making huge explosion, pushing the heroes back, sludge. You've got so much power I've really hit the jackpot with a quirk like yours under my control, I can take out all might with one punch. The civilians watching were slightly frightened by the scene, civilian. Whoa is that some kind of special move, civilian. This dude is a legit super villain, civilian. 
gasp look it's her that new hero mount lady will stop him she said but mount lady had to stop since the buildings were too close together gasp my only weakness i'll need at least a two lane road if i want to make my way through she shouted in her giant form amui swung in and grabbed several civilians from in the fire to get them out fire and wood don't exactly make a good combination i'll need to leave someone else to handle this guy he said jumping away as backdraft fired water on the flames don't look at me i've got my hands full here where are those fire trucks anyone he shouted to the other heroes f arms i can't get a grip on his weird body and that kid keeps causing explosions left and right we've got to knock him out of the park somehow akugo kept struggling which death arms noticed but he also noticed the villain attacking incoming he shouted jumping back dodging another of the villain's tendrils f arms it's no good we don't have the right quirks to take down a villain like this extra hero we just gotta keep it under control till someone else gets here he said as another flame burst from behind some glass in a building act raft there's still plenty of people to save. Pamui. Don't worry I bet every hero in the city is on their way. He said pulling people out the fire form on top of building. F arms thoughts. Sorry kid you're just gonna have to hold on a little longer. F arms. Damn if only I had more power I could blow this guy away. All Might had just arrived to hear the people trying to support the heroes who could do nothing when he recalled how he lost the villain, must have dropped him in the air, I got distracted, worrying about my time limit, can't believe I made such a rookie mistake, and I was lecturing that kid on how to be a hero he clenched his wound, I'm pathetic he said to himself. Izuku Pav. Izuku walked down a street depressed hearing Bakugo's and All Might's words replaying in his head even All Might said it being a hero needs a quirk, he sniffled and wiped his nose with tears in his eyes, don't cry damn it deep down, you know this all along, you were just avoiding reality, that's why you were trying to prove yourself wrong. He berated himself, boom, Izuku. Huh. He turned to where the sound came from and saw he arrived at the villain site that strange, is the fight from earlier still going on why am I here did I subconsciously walk here to check it out. He questioned himself walking to the crowd with I even's top all my notes are useless, he looked at the scene in shock, Izuku. Gasp, that's the guy who attacked me he shouted to himself in shock no way all might captured him, he thought before recalling how all might had lost him, Izuku. But the bottle if he dropped it that means it's my fault. Mountain lady. Everyone stay back. She shouted shrinking down and standing in front of everyone as they screamed since the villain's attack nearly hit them, Izuku thoughts. It's my fault this is all my fault, and he's already caught someone how can they breath, I thought I'd die in only a few minutes aw oh man, he covered his mouth shocked, extra one. Wait I'm confused isn't that the villain All Might was chasing today, extra two. What All Might but wait lost where is he, extra three. Wait can't someone call him or something, extra. Yeah where is he. All Might thoughts looked down in shame, and so did Izuku, Izuku thoughts. This is all my fault I'm the one to blame, All Might thoughts. I'm worthless. Izuku thoughts he can't power up yet, and none of the other heroes have the quirks to stop this monster. All Might thoughts. So pathetic. Izuku thoughts it's my fault I'm sorry so sorry. All Might thoughts. Disgrace. Izuku thoughts. Help will show up and save the day I'm sure. All Might thoughts. I'm not a real hero. Izuku. Someone a real hero will come soon. But that was when Izuku saw the look on Bakugo's face. Izuku ran forward past the crowd shocking everyone including All Might. F arms. No you idiot stop him before he gets killed, he shouted as Izuku ran forward, Izuku thoughts. Why can't I stop? Sludge. You again this time I'll kill you. He shouted sending an arm of sludge at him, Izuku thoughts. What do I do what would a hero do right now page 25 right? Izuku spun around and threw the bag of his shoulder over the villain as one book fell from it and into its eye, causing it to scream in pain and let Bakugo's head free as he took a much needed breath. Izuku began to dig Bakugo out of the sludge, Bakugo. What the hell why are you here? Izuku. I don't know my legs they just started moving. All my thoughts. What is this? I don't know why I did what I did other than for my father's words, maybe it was the look on his face. Izuku. Catch and I couldn't just stand there and watch you die. Bakugo. Get the hell off me. All Might was pushing his limits growing to save someone no matter the cost. Sludge. Just a little bit longer kid and I'm done with you. He shouted about to hit Izuku. F arms. Save the boy. Izuku covered himself with his arms, but the hit never came. All Might. I really am pathetic, Izuku looked up at the pro in shock, all might. I told you what is needed to be a hero, but I wasn't participating in the practice as well now let me deal with this, he grabbed Bakugo, all might. Detroit, sludge. No, all might. Smash. The sludge villain blew apart the air pressure from the attack, caused all the flames to go out and change the weather, shocking everyone meanwhile Izuku and Bakugo were unconscious, extra 4. Did that just happen, extra 5. He just changed the weather with a single punch, extra 8. He saved the day he's amazing. After that the heroes collected all the sludge villain's remains and the police took him into custody, All Might got celebrated and I was congratulated by some, Hamui. 
You moron do you have a death wish. F arms. There was absolutely no reason for you to put yourself in danger like that, Hamui. It was reckless and foolish you should have let us do our jobs. Izuku looked down in shame. I was thankfully only given a warning. Well Kachin was praised for his bravery. Bakugo glared at Izuku while he was being talked to by a pro about his bravery. Time skip. People were watching what happened on the TVS, revealing All Might, Bakugo's and Izuku's face on screen. Meanwhile Izuku was on his way home. I wanted to apologize to All Might, but he was swarmed by reporters. I was lucky enough that they let me go home. But he looked down hurt remembering All Might's and the other pro hero's words. Bakugo. Deku. Izuku turned to see Bakugo run up to him. Izuku. Kachin. Bakugo. Listen up Deku you did nothing you hear me you were just a useless loser like you saw, and that will never change you did nothing I don't owe you a thing. He turned around and began walking away leaving Izuku who smiled sadly. Izuku. You're right all of you are right I'm nothing, and I'll never be a hero. Izuku turned around walked home crying his heart out. Season 1 Episode 3. Revelation. Flashback. Bakugo. Deku. Izuku turned to see Bakugo run up to him. Izuku. Kachin. Bakugo. Listen up Deku you did nothing you hear me you were just a useless loser like you saw, and that will never change you did nothing I don't owe you a thing. He turned around and began walking away leaving Izuku who smiled sadly. Izuku. You're right all of you are right I'm nothing, and I'll never be a hero. Izuku turned around walked home crying his heart out. Present. Izuku walked into his apartment his mother was in the kitchen cooking. Inko. Oh hi sweetie how was school today? She asked him he wanted to tell her he wanted her to know everything, but he was too much trouble for her, so he clenched his fist he didn't add more to her load, so he closed his eyes and sighed. Izuku. Nothing mom. Inko. Oh that's nice, oh yeah Izuku could you please go to Addict and get my jewelry, Mitsuki wants to go out later, and she invited me. Izuku. Oh oh sure mom. Inko. Thanks baby. Izuku walked to the hall of his house and stopped midway looking up to the string hanging down from the staircase, pulling the string down the stairs collapsed and stood straight, he climbed up and entered the attic, looking around he found her box of jewelry on top of a box and picked it up, but under it, he found a broken glass box with webs inside it, raising an eyebrow he picked it up, Izuku what was in here. He turned the shattered glass box around and saw the initials HM. They were his father's. He was so focused on the case he didn't see the insect slowly coming down and landing on his neck. It was dark blue with a white glow surrounding it. Its spider silk pack had a red pattern on it while its fangs shined a bright green. It crawled up his neck reaching just below his hair and raised its head before biting him. Izuku. Gah. He fell backwards with his neck slamming against the wall hearing a small squish. Inko. Izuku are you okay? She shouted worried yum um, I'm fine he replied rubbing his neck feeling something in it he pulled back and looked at his hand, seeing a squished spider he threw it away and rubbed his neck, not realizing his biostructure was slowly mutating. Izuku climbed down with the box hey mum I'm gonna put it in your room okay. He shouted to her sure sweetheart dinner is almost ready she told him suddenly this wave of dizziness hit him dot. Izuku walked to his room and looked at his mirror seeing electricity flowing in his eyes. He felt hotter than Yusol, so he took his shirt off accidentally dropping his glasses before collapsing onto his bed. Time skip. The next morning. Izuku yawned and woke up, he rubbed his head and sat up looking down, he saw his glasses and picked them raising his head he looked at the mirror he could see, he could see without his glasses. Izuku. What the hell. It was then he realized his body was completely different standing up he hugged himself checking out his muscles. Izuku. Whoa. He flexed a little. Knock knock. Inko. Izuku. Are you alright? Izuku. Yeah. Inko. Any change? Izuku. Change why yeah big change. Inko. Well hurry Izu you have school. Izuku. K mum. Izuku got changed into his school clothes filling them up a bit too much, so he just left the black top on his bed and wore the white shirt pulling the sleeves up, since they were now short for him he was even taller than Bakugo at least being 177 cms tall. He ran out the room even more energetic than ever. Inko. Good you're up hungry. Izuku. No thanks mom. He kissed her cheek and ran to the door. Inko. Be home soon. Izuku. Yeah yeah I'll see you later mom. Izuku left the house leaving Inko giggling. I see I was worried for no reason. Time skip. Izuku arrived at school and looked around noticing the people staring at him. Most girls had blushes on their face which embarrassed him. So he kept his head down as he walked before bumping into someone. What's your damage? The girl he bumped into shouted. Izuku took a step back I I'm sorry I d didn't mean to he stuttered. Why in the world would you think I'd ever believe you Eldera's biggest loser Deku. She shouted at him. Itsuki. Snort hey Todd looks like Deku is hitting on your girl. Izuku. W wait I I d didn't mean to I swear. Todd. Oh is that so Deku well whatever it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter she ran to his face you don't care. Todd. 
Why should I do you want to date Deku? I want him groveling on his knees for touching me thank you very much. Everyone began laughing at Izuku before Bakugo grabbed him by the collar. Lucky you didn't try this with my girl Deku. If your loser got within a single foot of Kami, I would beat you to the ground and give you another scar, he said with a smirk on his face. He said reminding Izuku of the scar on his chest it healed but still shows, but now Izuku wasn't scared he was angry. Izuku. Back of Bakugo Bakugo was shocked he didn't address him as Kachin, I won't be your punching bag anymore things have changed. He narrowed his eyes at him before he pushed him suddenly time slowed down for Izuku as he backflipped over one of his bullies trying to trip him up. Izuku? Whoa. Extra one. What the heck. Extra two. How did he do that? Bakugo? GRR, Deku D. He shouted charging to explode him reaching out his hand when Izuku on instinct grabbed it and swung him over his shoulder, tightening his grip on his wrist, causing a crack sound while smashing him onto the ground. The Kugo began wheezing on the ground holding his wrist shocking everyone. Bully 1. Deku. He charged at Izuku extending his fingers trying to hit him in the face time slowed down again and Izuku dodged shocking them all. Extra, he dodged again. Bully 1. Gaia. He sent one more hit when Izuku grabbed his wrist and sent him flying back. Izuku turned to Todd who backed up and held his arms in the air, surrendering Izuku's breathing got hitched he looked at his hands in shock hearing them all. Extra. He's a freak a monster what the hell freak loser Deku. Izuku ran away from there leaving the school he ran into the street, a car nearly hit him before he flipped over it the people watching began clapping, but Izuku got even more scared and ran away at speeds he didn't realize he was capable of. Time skip, Izuku arrived at Takaba beach, stopping in the sandy area he took deep breaths and sat down, Izuku. WH what's happening to me Sai okay Izuku just calm down let's see. He went into his bag and pulled out his hero analysis notebook no.13. He went through the pages till he reached an empty one and began to write. Izuku. So far seen abilities are heightened senses, auto reflexes, enhanced strength and speed, but is this a quirk no it can't be. He had a flashback to the spider bite and touched his neck no mark of the bite. Izuku. Accelerated healing it can't be a coincidence that spider must have given me these abilities, and if that's true, then I could possibly do anything a spider can like gasp climbing walls, a spider can also lift 170x their weight, and if I have inherited a spider's powers, I could lift about 25,000 pounds, roughly translating to 12.5 ton or maybe more, considering it isn't an ordinary spider, but for now let's test wall crawling. Izuku got up and approached a mountain of rubbish he placed both his hands on two solid pieces of trash and began to climb up, he could feel his hand sticking to the rubbish, thinking he got high enough he looked down to see himself 10 feet up hahaha no way this is amazing, he cheered taking his hands off the wall whoa. He screamed thinking he'd fall but he didn't and smiled even brighter than before. After coming down he wrote that in too. Izuku. Okay spiders also have 8 legs let's see. He stretched out his arms standing in a T-pose, but nothing happened him no extra limbs what about webs he looked back and sighed thankfully he didn't have the spider butt with the webs maybe in the wrists, he looked at his wrist but found nothing. Izuku. Okay, no webs. He ran to his notebook and jotted that down well it doesn't matter these abilities are amazing and with them I can be a hero. Izuku's smile of joy slowly began to disappear. Bakugo. Deku. Inko. I'm sorry Izuku. All Might. You can't be a hero without a quirk. Death Arms. What were you thinking? Hamui. You should have left this to the professionals. Izuku closed his eyes no heroes don't exist anymore he looked at his hand, but maybe I can be more. The wind blew Izuku's notebook pages to the side, revealing a new page. Izuku. I will become something better and this change this world for everyone who's been treated like they were nothing like they never existed. I will make everything fair, so that no matter what everyone will always live their day with a bright smile he said to himself. Time skip. At night, when Izuku got home he found his mother sitting at the kitchen table. Izuku. Mum, Inko. Izuku. She looked at him with tears and ran to him hugging him tight. Inko. My baby where were you, why did you hit Katsuki he's your friend, I'm begging you tell me I can't take this Izuku please my baby. Izuku smiled at his mother's worry and kissed her forehead guiding her back to where she was sitting he sat next to her and held her hands mum, I I've got a lot to tell you. Izuku began telling everything the moments he got bullied, the moment his life changed, the moment Bakugo began to attack him, how every day for the last several years he's been suffering in silence to not bother her with more problems. He told her about the spider and the powers he'd gotten, he also showed her she fainted twice due to the shock, but grew happy for him nonetheless tears were shed from both sides, however the two reached a mutual understand and their relationship got stronger, no secrets hidden no lies kept a secret. Time skip, Inko. Izuku my baby are you sure about this? Izuku. 
yeah mum heroes they don't exist anymore, and I can understand why All Might would say I can't become one without powers, but there's so many who fight without power he's just biased he thinks because he has this amazing power he's above everyone, and that if they're not remotely like him they can't succeed, he even told me to be a cop, he destroyed my dream and left me on the roof I don't want to be like that and I think becoming a vigilante will help make my dream a reality, Inko. I see and about Bakugo why did you hide all this from me, Izuku. I had to so you wouldn't have to worry about me, but now I have strength I have the power to protect myself, Inko. MMM well then Izuku I will support you with all I am I promise. Izuku smiled and placed his mother's hand on his cheek thank you mum for everything my whole life. She teared up and nodded now Izuku I have something to show you something Hisashi didn't want you to see till you were ready she got up and walked to her bedroom, leaving Izuku shocked he thought his dad abandoned them because he had no quirk. She came back placing a laptop in front of Izuku it was old, but on it was a single video with his dad in it, he looked scared and was hiding from something, Inko pressed play letting Izuku watch, Hisashi. Hi guys it's me again listen I don't have much time, but I couldn't leave without saying goodbye, boom, Hisashi. Izuku listen to me my son sniff I love you so so much sniff, boom, Hisashi. I know it's been hard son, I know you must be scared and hurt, thinking you're all alone because you have no quirk, but it doesn't matter it never mattered Izuku, boom boom find him. The Sashi. Because from the moment you were born you saved me sniff sniff holding you in my arms, seeing you smile you became my light I love you with every part of my existence, and I am so thankful for the child you gave me Inko my river lily, I love you with all my heart, boom, with Izuku, Izuku began crying as did Inko, in the video, the Sashi. Now listen up I made something, something that could change this world the spider serum, but the project proved too dangerous, so I destroyed it the original reason for it though was complete I made it to give you powers, powers beyond your understanding son, boom there he is get him, several unknown people grabbed Hisashi and began pulling him, Inko, Hisashi, Izuku, dad, Hisashi, Izuku listen to me with great power comes great responsibility remember Izuku I will always love you you hear me no matter what you are my son, the Sashi stopped struggling and smiled with tears streaming down his face he stared at the two I love you both, so so much, and I will do anything to protect you Izuku my beautiful baby boy always remember Papa loves and Inko, shut up. One guard smashed a gun in Hisashi's face causing him to cough blood, the Sashi. I'm so glad I met you because the moment I did I've never stopped loving you, the Sashi clicked his tongue a small capsule fell to the ground I've left one for you Izuku find it and become the hero you were meant to be Hisashi breathed in a lot of air and stared at the camera one more time, the Sashi. Goodbye my beautiful family, he roared out flames at the capsule, causing a huge explosion, end of the video, Izuku, Nuo, Inko hugged her son as he screamed, Inko. Izuku your dad loves you and believed in you so I will too okay, Inko moved Izuku face to look at hers we'll both start now we'll change together okay, Izuku wiped his tears and nodded yeah, he replied wiping his tears, he stared at the frozen screen and put his hand on his father's face, Izuku, I love you dad, the lesson stuck to me that day a lesson that will remain with me for the rest of my life. With great power comes great responsibility. Time skip. The next day Inko and Izuku could be seen sitting in an office, both wearing formal clothing in front of a man with white hair and eye patch on his door, written was Principal Ryama. Ryama. Inko to what do I owe this pleasure and Izuku look how big you've gotten come give your god father a hug. Izuku got up and hugged the man before both took a seat again. Ryama. So tell me how have you been how's school? Inko. That's what we're here to talk about Ryo. The man raised an eyebrow before Inko told him everything about Isaac's school situation he got so worked up he nearly broke the table. Ryama. I see and what is it you wanted to ask me, Inko. I'd like your help entering Izuku into this academy. Ryama closed his eyes and stood up walking over to the window behind him, placing his hand on it with a sad expression. Inko do you remember how we met Hisashi? Brought me to your house he found me injured, alone and sick, but he took care of me, regardless of the fact I could have killed you both. You treated me like family, and you two became my family, and to me family is the most important thing, so of course I'll help. He turned to the two with a smile. Ryama. I will gladly take Izuku into my school leave it to me, but you're gonna have to wait a while since we are starting our new year soon, Izuku. Thank you so much Uncle Ryo. Ryama patted Izuku's head chuckle no problem Izuku if there is anything you ever need always remember I'm right here. Izuku teared up he really did love his uncle who cherished him and his mother. Season 1 episode 4. Much needed change, Izuku. Hey mum you going somewhere? Asked Izuku walking out his bedroom, Inko. Izuku do you remember what I said about letting you become a vigilante? Izuku. Yes why do you ask? Inko. Because I'm worried Izuku I'm worried that something will happen to you so we'll go somewhere, somewhere for you to get special training to master your powers and maybe get stronger. Izuku. Really? Inko. Yep no go get changed. Izuku dashed off leaving a dust figure of himself before coming back in a red tank top and black shorts. Izuku. 
Okay, then I'm ready ma'am, he saluted making his mother giggle, Inko. Good okay Spider-Man let's hop to it, Izuku. Spider-Man. Inko. Yep cause you have spider powers and you're a man now, Izuku raised an eyebrow, time skip, the two took a few minutes before arriving at the beach Izuku learned his powers at, Izuku. Um um, um why are we here, Inko. Because this is where you'll be training Izu, Izuku. E. Inko pulled his ear, don't yell young man, she demanded ow 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 I'm sorry mum. He repented so she'd let go, Izuku. I'm sorry mum, but I really assumed we'd head to the gym since well you know that's where people train the most, Inko. Yes however your powers are still new, and your body is still adapting, so we need to get you ready, and besides there's another reason as to why we're starting your training here, Izuku. Really? Inko. Yep this is the same place your dad proposed to me it was one of the most amazing moments of the, my life, and I never want to forget, Izuku. Oh, mum, Inko. When this beach started gathering rubbish in it I tried everything in my power to save it, but no one would help eventually that big company Oscar began dumping their stuff here like chemicals and machines, so Izuku please, please save this wonderful beach so we can keep that part of his sashi with us. Izuku hugged his mother tightly I I never knew, but don't worry mum I promise you I will make this beach cleaner than ever, I swear he promised feeling his mother cry into his shoulder, sniff I I don't know sniff what I did to get a sniff angel like you as my son, but I'm so so thankful she whispered into his chest happy. Izuku. I will do my best I swear it, Inko. All right now I'll be heading to the gym okay. Izuku nodded watching her walk off before turning to the beach, this is where I'll start my journey he said to himself. Izuku wondered the beach finding parts he could use thinking of the ways it would help him, he would also use some of the chemicals that were intact and left by Oscar to create a web shooter to help him on his days of being Spider-Man. He collected pellets and other chemicals that would create the webs he desired to create storing them in pellets he found hidden under a truck packing the webs into them, he used a watch and circuits to create the device that would fire the webs. The spinneret mechanisms in each web shooter are machined from stainless steel, except for the turbine component, which is machined out of a block of Teflon, and the two turbine bearings, which are made of amber and artificial sapphire. The wristlets and the web fluid cartridges, the latter of which he'll wear under his belt beneath his costume's tunic, are mainly nickel-plated annealed brass. The wristlets have sharp steel nipples, which pierce the bronze caps when the cartridges are tightly wedged into their positions. The hand wound solenoid needle valve on each web shooter is actuated by a palm switch, this, in turn, is protected by a band of spring steel, which requires a 65-pound pressure to trigger it. The switch of each is situated high on his palm to avoid most unwanted firings. An additional safety measure to prevent misfires while he is making a fist or carrying things is that the trigger has to receive a double tap from his middle and third fingers. The small battery compartment is protected by a rubber seal. After finishing the web he admired his work and decided to test it, so he left and stood on top of one of the highest buildings and turned on the web shooter. He started off by doing a handstand removing one hand and then standing on only two fingers before falling down. Izuku. Woo. As he dived down he screamed before firing a web attaching it to a building he swung reaching the sidewalk and crashing into a bunch of cutlery, while everyone around him looked at him like he was insane. Time skip. After that Inko began helping Izuku sew his new vigilante suit, it consisted of arm and knee guards, black pants, a red jacket with the spider symbol, fingerless gloves and a web shooter. Now perched on top of a building Izuku crouched for his first night of vigilantism. Present. Izuku jumped down and began to swing through the city. Izuku landed on a building and pulled his hood down, breathing heavily he smiled and swung away. Meanwhile in an alley. Let me go. The girl's voice could be heard echoing through a dark alleyway in it. We could see five men carrying a girl tied up. She had beautiful crimson hair, a figure well past her age, and beautiful red eyes, with her clothes torn up and cuffs around her hand. Crook 1. Would you shut up? One of them demanded. Let me go damn it. Crook 2. Hey do you know why the boss wants ransom for her? Crook 1. Idiot this girl is part of the Royal Vermilion family, and if they want her back then they'll have to pay a lot for her. Crook 3. But she's so much trouble. Crook 4. We just need to keep going. The girl looked at one of the hands perched on her shoulder and bit it. Crook 1. Owch you filthy bitch. They dropped her on the ground as she groaned in pain, before feeling one of them throw her against the wall, and holding her there by the neck they tore of her bindings, leaving a quirk racing cuff around her hands. Crook 2. You know boys the boss never said we couldn't enjoy a taste of her first. Crook 5. You're right and this could serve as punishment. Crook 3. What do you doll want to make this worth or while you'll have fun too? The guy moved his hand feeling her up as she squirmed and teared up the man was about to touch her breast when suddenly his hand was webbed to the wall. Crook 2. What the? Izuku. Wow first kidnapping now groping how original guys I'm impressed. His voice echoed around them. Crook 1. Who's there? Izuku. Crotch. Izuku jumped on one's neck and spun around flipping him into the shadows so they couldn't see him. Crook 3. Come out damn you. 
Izuku walked into the light revealing himself well not his head as Crook 5 just took out a knife, just let us go he demanded, Izuku. Is that a knife? He put his hands up and looked down feigning fear, Izuku. Is that a real knife? He went down to his knees and covered his head, Crook 3. Yes it's a real knife, Izuku. My weakness, it's small knives, Crook 4. Just let us go, Izuku. Anything but knives. He shouted before webbing the three's hand to the wall, and then his entire body covering his mouth and then crotch, Crook 4. Damn you. He charged at Izuku with his metal-coated fist, but Izuku punched him into a wall. Number 2 came at him with swords for hand so Izuku, Izuku. Let's go rock dodge paper dodge punch. He punched him in the face sending him into the ground, Four came and tried hitting him in the face, but Izuku grabbed him by the head and smashed him into a wall. Once done he turned to the girl looking at him in shock, a blush came on her face as she stared deep into his emerald-colored eyes. Izuku. Are you okay? He asked crouching down to her and removing her cuffs. Why yeah oh I'm Stella, Stella Vermilion it's nice to meet you, she said rubbing her wrists. Izuku. You too Sue I'll see you later K okay, stay safe. Stella. Wait dot 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 what's your name? But it was too late Izuku had swung away leaving her there after a few seconds she smiled and put her hand on her chest, thank you my hero, back with Izuku, that was amazing, I can't believe I saved her and beat them all up oh man I love. Spider sense, back flipping Izuku aimed at another building and, whip, hired another web swinging away when, the building was lit on fire Isaacus eyes widened in shock, so he turned and swung to the flames, seeing multiple random heroes at the scene and backdraft there as well, Izuku landed near a firefighter when he heard a woman scream my baby, someone please save my baby she's trapped in there, the heroes were holding her back, and no ones was going in to save the child, so gathering up his courage, Izuku ran inside before anyone could stop him. Izuku ran up a flight of stairs when part of the ceiling came down nearly hitting him he covered his head from the fire, hearing the faint sounds of a child crying in the background. The crying stopped and he heard nothing so he looked around till he heard it again, ah the child screamed here and down another hallway, stopping in front of a door it was reinforced, though meant to stop any quirk from breaking through. Izuku. Hold on. He used all his strength and punched the door, but all he made was a dent. Izuku. God damn it. He held his stinging fist when more of the ceiling came down. Kid help. Izuku. Hold on. He shoulder charged the door, but nothing hey kid. He called out but heard nothing and then, thud, Izuku. No kid kid kid. He was failing and he was losing breath the smoke was now coming into his lungs. The sashi. Become the hero you were meant to be. Izuku clenched his fist reeled it back. The sashi. With great power comes great responsibility. Inko. I love you Izuku. Izuku punched the door again, and then again, and then again he punched it over and over the wall around it began to break with the door, reeling his fist back the glove covering the knuckles was torn and blood trailed down his hands. He used all his strength smashing his fist through the door and pulling it out, finding the kid lying on the ground he picked him up when suddenly the entire building collapsed. Outside, women. New. My baby, my baby. She screamed falling to her knees sobbing the people looked at her sadly when they saw a large amount of the wood and bricks fly up and from it came out Izuku holding her child. He walked towards the mother who looked up at him. Izuku. Here. He handed the boy to her slowly she looked at her son as he breathed tiredly covered in ashes. She cried and hugged her son kissing his forehead over and over. Firefighter. Hey kid you okay. Izuku fell to the ground. Extra one. Hey how did he get the kid out the house. Extra two. Yeah aren't the doors made of metal and reinforced. Extra three. Look at his hands. Extra four. D did he really do that too to himself to save the kid? Extra five. He's a hero. One person began clapping and then another, and then everyone around began clapping for Izuku, giving him compliments one firefighter then approached him. Hey you okay? She kneeled down with bandages taking Isaac's hand and wrapping it. You know what you did in there was really brave, so you should be proud. She looked up and found herself blushing staring into his eyes. Izuku. Thank you so what's your name? Oh I'm Tamaki from the Fire Force Company 8 and you, Izuku. Oh I'm a new vigilante your friendly neighborhood. An image of Inko smiling came to mind. Izuku. Spider-Man. Tamaki. Well Spider-Man you should get out of here before the other pros arrive and as a reward. She kissed his cheek. Tamaki I'll be seeing you Spider-Man W.O. She tripped over and landed on top of Izuku her hand under his jacket feeling up his abs and his hands under her bra Isaac's face was bright red and so was hers. Extra one. Uo. Extra two. Ah young love. Izuku Tamaki. Wait it's not what it looks like. Police. You stop right there vigilante, pro. Put your hands in the air and surrender, Izuku. Well that's my QC ya. He fired a web at a nearby building and slid under Tamaki and swung away, pro. Hey get back here. I'm skip, Izuku. Sigh that was tiresome. He said arriving home and opening the door the lights were off so he walked to his room when the lights turned on, Inko. Hello, mister. Izuku turned around slowly and saw her staring at him with a stern expression so young man have a fun night. 
she asked him, Izuku. Oh oh yeah I was alright, Inko. Oh good good cause I was looking for anything about you when I found this, she showed him a photo on her phone of him and Tamaki in their embarrassing position, Izuku. I can explain. Inko. Ah naughty boys need punishment, Izuku. Gulp I'm sorry, I I I, I. season 1 episode 5. The failed project, Izuku could be seen perched up a roof looking down at the city when something flew into his face, Izuku. What the OS Corporation, the paper was an advertisement for people to visit the lab and meet Dr. Kurt Connor, Izuku. Hmm, this might be worth it I'll check it out tomorrow, he jumped off the roof and swung away, Izuku. Hey mum I'm heading to Oscorp, he called out running out his bedroom to her, Inko. Oscorp why? Izuku. Well they have this visiting thing and I'd like to see something there, Inko. Hmm okay I won't pry any longer, but I'll be heading to the gym later, Izuku. Okay mum, he kissed her cheek and ran off, time skip, at Oscorp Tower, the second largest company in all of Japan second to only the Aoi Rozu industry, Izuku walked inside watching people walk up escalators, talk to other men in suits it screamed professional, receptionist. Excuse me, Izuku. Oh what? He turned to the women at the desk a few feet away from him and walked to her, receptionist. Can I help you, Izuku? Oh um I'm here to see Dr. Connors, receptionist. Right you can go find yourself to the left you are here for the internship. Izuku. Yeah yeah, he replied nervously, receptionist. Okay go find your badge to the left, she said with a smirk watching him take one oh. Yeah I got it he said picking one up reading Guevara okay MR. Guevara, Izuku. Gracious, receptionist. Donata. After that Izuku left Tadi Escalator seeing the other interns here in front of a blonde haired girl. Welcome to Oscorp my name's Melissa Shield I'm a senior at I Island Academy and I'm also head intern with Dr. Connors so I'll be with you for the duration of your visit where I go you go that's the basic rule. If you remember that all will be fine and if you don't well. Ah. They all looked down to the real Guevara being dragged out and Izuku looked away sweating bullets. Melissa. Well I guess I don't need to tell you what'll happen. Shall we? She guided them into the laboratory, where Dr. Connors approached them, without the stethoscope and he only has one hand, when? I'd like you all to meet Dr. Connors, Connor, good afternoon Melissa, Melissa. Dr. Connors, Connors. Welcome my name is Dr. Curtis Connors and yes in case you're wondering I'm a southpaw, everyone chuckled I'm not a cripple I'm a scientist and I'm the world's foremost authority on herpetology. That's reptiles for those of you who do not know, but like the Parkinson's patient who watches in horror as her body slowly betrays her or the man with macular degeneration, whose eyes grow dimmer each day I hope to fix myself, I want to create a world without weakness. Anyone care to venture a guess just how? One put their hand up, Connor. Yes, extra one, stem cells, Connor. Promising but the solution I'm thinking of is more radical. Pro-species genetics, everyone moved apart revealing Izuku, Izuku person gets Parkinson's when the brain cells that produce dopamine start to disappear, but a zebrafish has the ability to regenerate cells on command. If you could somehow give this ability to the women you're talking about that's that she she's healing herself, extra two. Yeah you just have to look past the gills on her neck, everyone laughed, Connor. SSH everyone shut up huh and you are. Izuku. Oh oh I my Izuku Midori a third year at older high, Connors. A pleasure Mr. Midoriya. Honors then got a call I'm afraid duty calls I'll leave you in Miss Shield's capable hands nice meeting you all. He walked away as Melissa then showed them a hologram Izuku tried sneaking away, though Melissa caught up to him hi, she greeted what are you doing there Midoriya or rather Rodrigo. She questioned him, Izuku. How oh, yeah, Melissa. Diggle what are you doing here, Izuku. I work here. I don't work here I was gonna say I work here, but it seems like in fact you do know that I don't, Melissa. Is it to see Dr. Connors? Izuku no of course not, Melissa. Then why are you here? You obviously snuck in for a reason, Izuku. I snuck in cause I love science, Melissa. You love science, Izuku. I'm extremely passionate about it, Melissa. You snuck in because you love science. I, dot, I have to lead this tour group. So I'm gonna ask you do not get me in trouble, Izuku. Of course not shield, they went back to the group, but Izuku got a little too curious and ended up leaving following a man that seemed to be holding sensitive information, making his spider sense go off and hit as he watched him open a room with a pin, when a group of workers in hazard suits came out the room and left with him. Once gone Izuku walked Hadi door and repeated the code entering the room, carefully watching a machine create the same webs he used only much more stronger, so he decided to take a few of them to experiment with and stored them in his bag, then he approached another room that was unlocked, so he quietly he entered the room. Izuku. No way dot dot. He approached the pad in the center of the room and searched through it, they were recreating the spider that bit him, but these were much more dangerous, the cross-species genetics for them it was too deadly, which was probably the reason as to why they had no success.
he searched through several files finding the results of each test on humans some ended up exploding, others melted and a few killed themselves due to their loss of sanity and immense pain. But there was one more one classified as variant, it gave people superhuman capabilities and mutated their quirks in some cases, even giving the person more power however the process was shut down as it led to subjects falling into rage and killing everything inside Izuku had to take it before they could weaponize it. So he first plugged in a hard drive from his bag downloading all the data onto the USB and then unlocked a vault in the wall, taking the glowing yellow formula. Packing it in his bag he left the room without anyone seeing him he then ran walked back to where Melissa was only to see her standing in front of him looking at him accusatorially. Melissa. Give me the badge, give it to me. Izuku gave it to her and left in a hurry with her watching him suspiciously. But Izuku. Izuku ran out of there and immediately went back him via web swinging. Time skip. At home Izuku ran to his room realizing his mother wasn't there and unpacked his bag, placing the web capsule in a drawer and closing it. He opened his laptop and plugged in the hard drive downloading the files. When it finished he heard beep beep and went into his laptop going through everything their cross-species genetics, their tests all of it the gruesome results and the horrific events caused by them, even the new projects like Oscar Flight Suit, designed to beat Yeoi Rozu in profit margins, was borderline physcotic. It took the vitality of the person wearing the suit in order to give them different abilities, they called it the hard hybrid gear it was disgusting to Izuku to think they would experiment on children like that, when suddenly he came up on a name that made his eyes widen in shock, flashback, the girl with silver hair could be seen crying against a wall to the labs, Isaac's father took him for a visit, Izuku. Hey are you okay? He asked worried she look up at him revealing her beautiful eyes, how w who are you, Izuku. I'm Izuku Midoriya it's nice to meet you. He smiled happily to her she took a moment before wiping her tears and smiling back. I'm. And a flashback. Izuku was pissed how dare they do this to her. He ended up crushing some of his desk under his strength. Izuku. Sigh. Suddenly a new article came up one that interested him very much it had a photo of Dr. Connor and Hisashi smiling with Hisashi. Putting his arm around his friend's neck like they were best buds. Dr. Connor even had both his arms still. Izuku. Dr. Connors knew my dad. I'm Skip. The next day. Knock knock knock. Dr. Connors came to the door and opened it and saw Izuku standing at his doorstep. Izuku. Dr. Connors uh, you don't remember me, but I uh. Connors. The intern from the other day. Izuku. Yeah yeah that's right, yeah. Connors. I'm sure you're a very nice young man, but this is a home. If you want to talk to me make an appointment at the office. He began to walk away when I'm Hisashi Midoriya's son he said making the man turn to him. Connors. Izuku. Scene change. Honors could be seen filling up a pot of coffee while Izuku leaned on the cupboards. Honor. I'm afraid I can't help you much Midoriya I don't know why he left or where he was going. He turned to walk away and accidentally dropped the cup only for Izuku to grab it. Honors. Good reflexes. Izuku. Thanks. He handed him the cup thank you. Dr. Connor thanked Izuku I read your book he told him. Honors. Oh. Izuku. Yeah, it's something you know so you really think it's possible. Cross species genetics. Honors. Yes of course. But you farther and I were mocked for our theories not just by society, but also by Oscar. Until your father bred the spiders the possibilities became endless, we were gonna heal the world including I, and you in fact you were the very reason he created those spiders then it was over he he was gone, he took his research with him and I I was angry, so I stayed away from you and your family, and for that I'm truly sorry. He looked down as did Izuku say it worked, as say you got it to work. Like how much would the foreign species take over? W what could the side effects be? Honors. It's hard to say considering no subject survived the problem was always. Izuku. The decayed algorithm. Honors. Right. Izuku. Right. Izuku walked behind the counter where he found a notebook. See, can I of course. Izuku sat down and began writing an equation the doctor fascinated approached and tried peeking. So when he was done Izuku showed it to him. Honors. Extraordinary. How did you come up with this? Izuku. In my head haha. <laughs> Honors looked at him with wonder and awe. How would you feel seeing me at the tower one day after school he asked him. Izuku. Yeah. Honors. Thank you. He took the paper and walked away. Time skip. Izuku could be seen lifting up some trash at the beach when. Hey. Izuku turned his head to the right. Over here. Izuku looked to his left seeing a girl with pink hair and beautiful golden eyes with a strange shape in them. Izuku. Hawaii yes. You. You're the one moving the junk from here it's your fault I'm finding less and less things to build with. She approached Izuku with each word and now stopped in front of his face looking up at him with narrowed eyes Izuku gulped and took a step back. Izuku. I'm sorry but hey what's that? He asked looking behind her to see what she was building. Izuku. Hey is that a jetpack from the Booster Hero Air Jet? Oh yeah this is my new baby I based it on a certain hero's backpack. Izuku. I love that guy. Diggle isn't he awesome? The two got closer and closer till their faces were a few cms away from each other. Izuku blushed, but she didn't seem to mind, so he took a step back. Izuku. 
Anyway I forgot to introduce myself didn't I I'm Izuku Midori and nice to meet you um, may Hatsume Engineer Extraordinaire. Izuku. Chuckle it's nice to meet you Hatsume anyway about your invention problem how about I and you scour this place, find what you need and pull it to a separate pile off limits to anyone, may. Really. Izuku. Yep, may. Okay let's do this, Izuku. Right. Season 1. Episode 6 Dinner Date, Connors. We have nutrients, redna, chromatography, transgenics, x-ray video that's the only one on the planet. We have um human line testing over. The doctor showed Izuku around the lab. Izuku. I remember that. The doctor turned to look at an odd machine with liquid nitrogen tanks behind it. Izuku. I've seen that before. Connors. The Ganali device. Izuku. Yeah I remember a picture of that in my dad's suitcase. The two approached the machine the idea was so simple and loaded it with an antigen, it creates a cloud which can be dispersed over a neighborhood, an entire city, theoretically, you could cure polio in an afternoon, the doctor informed Izuku, who took a closer look at it, it's incredible he said admiring it, honors. Well others disagree, what if the device were loaded with a toxin? What if you wanted to opt out, you can't run from a cloud, so here it lies gathering dust, the doctor then guided Izuku to a room with a holographic display, Izuku. Whoa, honor. What you see here is a computer display of a lizard now, many of these wonderful creatures have so brilliantly adapted that they can regenerate entire limbs at will, you can imagine my and every person with a healing quirks, envy we're trying to harness this capability and transfer it into our host subject Freddy the free-legged mouse, enter the algorithm now, Izuku, right, Izuku entered the formula his father created when he got a call, Connors, do you need to take that, Izuku saw it was his mother oh oh yeah just a sec he walked away and held it to his ear, Izuku, yeah mum I know I'm sorry I'll be home late I'm at Oscar yes yes okay, see you love you too. Izuku hanged up and went back to the program was that Inko? He asked Izuku oh oh yeah he replied, Honor. Good I hope she's alright, Izuku. Oh yeah fine just wondering where I am, computer. Function ready, Izuku. Okay, Izuku moved the file towards Connor check he told him Connor took it and added a little tweak what are you trying to do? He asked him preempt the proteins. He responded, computer. Begin trials pending pending failed subject deceased. Izuku. Come on, come on, come on. Computer. Pending failed pending, failed pending failed subject deceased. Pending. Honor. Ah. He walked away when algorithm accepted regrowth complete vitals, normal blood pressure, normal limb regeneration successful. The computer showed it worked the mouse regrew its limb Izuku, and Connor smiled happily extraordinary, and thank you he said, placing a hand on Isaac's shoulder, before guiding him to the subject lab. There they met the mice meet Fred and Wilma are three-legged mice. He took out Fred and handed him to Izuku who held him lightly. Honors. Careful I don't want to stab you by mistake human trials aren't until next week. He said holding a needle near his hand, both chuckled at the joke before he injected the needle into the mouse there Connors said. Time skip. Izuku got home and the next few days he spent working at the beach cleaning it. He would start his days off with some light stretching very early in the morning 5 o'clock to be exact. He dressed in a tracksuit for his training and would make himself and his mother a light breakfast. Sometimes it was his mother who woke up before him and made breakfast, but most of the time it was him. By the next week had already managed to clean 20% of the beach and got a good grasp of his powers, he also got closer with May and found her non-stop excitement adorable of her, while other found it strange he even introduced her to his mother as friends, but she of course made fun of him about it. Speaking of Inko she too got fitter over the month she was taller, but still chubby sadly, and he hasn't gone to Nozomi City since his godfather's friends were not done with his and Inko's new living arrangements. But Connors, Connor. Cross species genetics is finally working, I've used the lizard DNA to help Freddy regrow that limb, it's a miracle, said Osborne's right hand, Connor. No it's hard work and a promise and a step closer to the primate lab, but he doesn't have time for little steps, Connor. Little. I just mean he can't wait, Connor. Well he'll have to, unless he wants to be a lab rat. That's not what I'm saying, he told him lifting up one of the experimental serums, Connor. So what are you saying? You have to start human trials now, Connors. No I don't and no I want, then he's going to die, Connors. People die. Even Norman Osborne. We are not finished, Connors walked up to his face with the files needed for the experiment human trials. Where on earth are you going to find the people to volunteer? What? As far as anyone's concerned it's for a flu shot. The veterans hospital is a place to start, Connors was disgusted and flabbergasted you've got to be kidding me. He told him, I don't think I am, Honors tried walking past him, but the man grabbed him by his missing limb, with his eyes flashing yellow, preventing him from moving and making Connors walk backwards, it's a little late for shock and indignation Kurt. About 15 years late, Connor. I have no idea what you're talking about, Asashi Midoriya wore it well, on you it's a cheap suit as it was then, Connors. 
I had nothing to do with that, is that what you told his son Izuku? Honors looked at him harboring anger inside I don't know what you're saying he played coy, you don't know. Or you don't want to know I'll remind you what happened. Hisashi Midoriya said about the same thing then that you are saying now, and we eliminated him and couldn't trace the last of his spiders, so we tried to recreate them, and look what happened we failed the clock is ticking Dr. Connors, Connor. I am dot dot I want, he said still refusing, find the formula is ours now anyway say goodbye to that arm you dreamed of. I'm shutting you down have your office cleared out by tomorrow your toys can be taken away, too, you know right Freddy. He said before leaving Dr. Connor's office, meanwhile with Izuku, Izuku could be seen jogging around the park wearing shorts and a sleeveless jacket with earphones in his ear, listening to music his eyes closed the day was still young, when he got a phone call he stopped and answered. Izuku. Hello this is Izuku, May. Hello muscles. Izuku. Ha May. What's up? May. Well you know how we became friends two days ago. Izuku. Guess why? May. Well you're my first ever real friend, and my parents would like to meet you so maybe you can come over. Izuku's face became bright red why why your house he asked yep, so what do you say Izuku oh okay, as sure he replied to her great, I'll send the address by she said happily hanging up. Izuku. Did I just get asked to meet her parents I got to get home and change. He ran away at high speeds towards his home to get ready, but Dr. Connors, Honor approached a glass wall seeing his hand's reflection as if he had his other limb, then he made up his mind and left towards a hidden room entering it, he walked towards a set of tubes holding the lizard serum, so he took one tube of it and placed it into a needle, and left the room sitting at a desk he took a moment to get his mind focused and slowly injected it into his lost limb, he began to groan in pain, feeling it break his body he lost conscience. Back with Izuku, Izuku reached Mei's house wearing a suit and crawled over to her bedroom window seeing her inventing an item. He knocked on her window getting her attention once she saw him she walked to him and opened her window hey there muscles how did you get here, she questioned him the fire escape he answered your doorman's intimidating, he told her climbing in, it's 20 stories she said back confused and shocked since he told her he was quirkless. Izuku. Yeah, it's alright, he said inside a room now, Izuku. Um this is your room I take it by the inventions, he said looking at her work desk, May. Yes this is my room giggle, Izuku. Oh yeah these are for you, he said pulling out a bouquet of flowers, May. Wow lovely, Izuku. Yeah I saw them on the way and they reminded me of you, May. Because of their color. She smiled cheekily because of their beauty he replied, making her blush bright red oh oh I see and I love the suit muscles she said looking him up and down like he was a piece of meat when suddenly her door opened hey hun, a man with a suit and black hair entered the room, when he saw Izuku he had a serious look on his face like he was gonna shoot him, you must be Midoriya, May. Dad this is Midoriya Izuku my first friend isn't he great. Izuku hesitantly approached the man and shook his hand, it's nice to meet you sir, the man tightened his hold on Izuku's hand which the boy returned, Mr. Hatsume. Firm grip, nice to meet you dinner's ready hope you like Brancino, Izuku. Who doesn't? He joked, but Connors, Connors woke up on his desk when he noticed something wrong with his missing arm he raised it and saw rotted scales encasing it, he began to peel it off, and once it was finally removed, it revealed a new arm slightly slimy with the veins showing, but it was there a new arm. He admired it and touched the light in front of him it burned slightly, but he didn't care about it all he cared about was he had a new arm, he then remembered his previous talk and ran to his office picking up the phone he put in the number and called someone up. Connors. Emma it's Kurt is he there? Emma. I'm sorry doctor but no he's on his way to the veterans hospital. Connor. No 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 you can't Emma you have to stop him he. Emma. I know but I'm always losing him on the edge I'll make sure he returns your call as soon as possible. Once she hanged up Connors fell down and held his head in pain. Time skip. Connors entered a taxi quickly wearing a coat while slightly hunched over and groaning take me across the avenue above the river hurry. He told the drive before looking at his hand, seeing it become larger more scaly and beastly. Driver. Got it do you want to go under the tunnel or the bridge? Connors. Take the bridge. Driver. All right hey man you all right back there. He asked hearing Connor groan in pain Connors then looked at the drivers his face had green scales and fangs began appearing in his mouth just drive he growled, scaring the driver who sped off. Back with Izuku. Izuku sat at the table with the Hatsume's in front of him a plate of Brandino he poked it with his knife which May's mother noticed. Is Hatsume. You're having trouble there aren't you start from the head us I'm and help May's friend with the fish. She told her youngest son first time he asked cutting the fish for Izuku. Izuku. Oh uh I had no idea. May. Giggle, Mr. Hatsume. Why don't you tell us about your day honey, Simon? Oh yeah dad did you catch that spider guy yet? Mr. Hatsume. We didn't catch him yet, but we will he's an amateur who's assaulting civilians in the dead of night he's clumsy he leaves clues, but he's still dangerous. Izuku raised an eyebrow he's assaulting people. I'm not sure I mean I saw that video of him saving that Stella Vermillion from those kidnappers, and I think that most people would say he's providing public service he stated, Mr. Hatsume. 
Well then most people would be wrong if I wanted those kidnappers off the streets, then they'd be off the streets, Izuku. Then why weren't they then? He questioned him making Mei laugh nervously, well let me enlighten you, you see the kidnappers were leading us to the guy who runs the entire operation, it's been a six month long sting, it's called strategy I'm sure you've heard the term strategy, Izuku. Yeah, Mr. Hatsume. Yeah, Mei looked at her mother for help, but her mother just shook her head, Izuku. Well obviously he didn't know you had a plan, Mr. Hatsume. Well you seem to know a lot about this case do you know something that we don't know about I mean whose side are you on here us and the heroes are this vigilante, Izuku. I'm not on anyone's side but I saw the video, Mr. Hatsume. Oh the video well case closed, Izuku. Well no I'm just saying in the video he looks like he's trying to help, Mr. Hatsume. No no yeah on the internet I'm sure he's been made out to look like some kind of masked hero or something, Izuku. No I'm not saying he's a hero at all, Mr. Hatsume. Then what are you saying, Izuku I'm saying he's trying to help I'm saying he's trying to do something maybe the police and heroes can't, Mr. Hatsume. Something we can't what do you think we do all day sitting around eating donuts with our thumbs up our asses, Izuku. No, but he seems to be doing a better job than any hero might I add, Mr. Hatsume. What where's your proof, Izuku? The building in flames when he got there no hero or police officer was there he dealt with it and saved a child about to die, no one else went in but him, Mr. Hatsume. Proof that he is a menace, Izuku. A menace or someone trying to do the right thing. Both males looked at each other with full seriousness when Mei got involved she stood up and walked away to the door. Mei. Let's get some air Midoriya, dad we need to talk, Mr. Hatsume. Yes we do, Izuku. Thank you for having me and I'm sorry if I disrespected you sir, Mr. Hatsume. No problem, Izuku. Thank you for the food Mrs. Hatsume it was great, Izuku got up and walked away with Mei. Outside, Izuku and Mei stood next to each other on the balcony looking out at the city, Mei. Well that was something muscles, Izuku. I'm sorry but I got scared he would arrest me at some point, Mei. Giggle I wouldn't have let him arrest you Izuku raised an eyebrow without making him use my own cuffs, Izuku. Chuckle sigh. He looked down at the streets what happened to you in there. She asked him I have to tell you something, Mei. Okay, she stared him in the eye, Izuku. I've been bitten, he said before realizing what he said and looking away so have I, May replied giggling okay okay okay, I've got to tell you this one thing about the vigilante and the car thief, oh okay she replied walking away, but Izuku brought her closer, Izuku. No 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 I I'm gonna talk about me, May. Okay what about you? Izuku looked down and sighed it was hard to tell her what. She asked, but he said nothing okay she walked away again this time further when Izuku fired a web at her and brought her into his arms, she looked at him in shock, May. Huh gasp why why you're him you're Spider-Man. Izuku chuckled and slowly leaned his forehead against hers, May. But why? Izuku. Tell you later. He whispered the two stayed like that until May's mother came, Mrs. Hatsume. May oh um come inside right away k when? Okay see ya muscles. She said kissing his cheek when the sound of sirens echoed into Isaac's ears, he looked out to see where it came from and jumped off the balcony. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like and share this video.and have a fantastic day bye.